I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon and this is a Team Tech Tip. In this Team Tech Tip we're going to show you just how capable the new generation Spectrum DX6 transmitter really is. In my personal opinion it's the most capable six channel transmitter on the market today and with a price that certainly makes it the best value. This radio not only provides dual rates, differential, servo reversing, endpoint adjustment, voice warnings and notices, lots of mixing capabilities both in the free mixes and pre-program mixes and then you have the flight modes which we're about to explore with you right now. So let's get a GX6 out and start programming in a full house competition sailplane with five flight modes. Because of the size of a sailplane it's a bit hard to show you how the servos operate with the flight mode set. So I have a new servo simulator mock-up that will reflect the programming we do with the DX6. So to begin Start with a model select. We're going to go from the operational mode and into the functional mode for model select. We're going to start with a new model. So let's go down to add new model. To press the scroll switch once. Create. Now let's move on down to model type. To press the scroll switch and switch to sailplane. To press the scroll switch once. Got it to be reset? Yes. You now notice that there is a new menu choice called sailplane type. Select that menu choice and depress the scroll switch once. Here we have the type of wing that we need to select. In our case, we have two aileron servos left and right and two flap servos left and right. So on the wing, we're going to select a four servo wing. Select the wing, depress the scroll switch and scroll through. Two aileron, not quite. Two aileron, one flap, we're getting closer. Two aileron, two flap, that's the one to go to. To press the scroll switch and go to the tail. What type of tail do we have? We have a normal tail with a rudder and elevator. To press the scroll switch and lock it in. We don't have a motor so we're going to go to the next key. Here's where you get to change the image of the sailplane if you wish. They have a few images like a V-tail, a T-tail, and a motorized, and a hand launch. But in this case, we're going to stay with the standard tail section here. You can also go to the previous one and look and change your wing type if you decide that you had the wrong one. But we don't, so we're going to go back. At this point, you will need to set up the plane with all servos centered except the flap servos. They need to be set at zero centering for now with no trim adjustment made in any flight mode. Here we have our servo sim with the servos fully exposed and you can see the servo arms in the neutral position. This is only a simulator to show you how things work. Note that the flap servos will most likely require offset to take advantage of the full servo arm movement. In my example, we started with the servo centered. I will now offset the centering of the servo using the offset function found in the camber system menu. Because we are using the DX6, the servo channel assignment for each flight control surface must be plugged into the receiver in the correct slot. The software makes those changes for you. This can be seen in the channel assignment screen within the system setup mode. Right now we are on this channel assignment screen. Go ahead and depress the scroll switch once. And now you can see the slots are numbered and titled and tells you which control plug goes to which slot. For the throttle, what used to be throttle is now the left aileron. Aileron, elevator, and rudder remain the same. On the number five slot for the landing gear is now right flap and auxiliary is the left flap. Your battery will plug into the bind battery slot. In our example, we are using a Spectrum RC AR610 receiver and it all works out fine. Make sure that if you're using a six channel receiver that does not have a separate battery bind plug connection, that you bind the model first with battery plug into any other position and then remove the binding plug and replace it with the battery connector. Note that the DX6 manual shows five flight modes and six switch positions possible from using the two three position switches on the transmitter. You only get five flight modes as the sixth position is to allow the second three-way switch to have priority. 
without priority the second three position switch would be inhibited all the time. We're now going to set up the flight modes. The sailplane is typically the most complex model type to assign flight modes to. In the GX6 you may have up to five flight modes which can be cruise, thermal, speed, launch, and landing. That's what we're going to program in this case. I wish to have five flight modes. I have selected to use switch B and switch D for my flight mode selection switches. Let's go into the F mode setup. As you see we have switch B and switch D selected. Five flight modes are enabled. And if you move the switches you'll see that the flight modes are there switching around. Once you have the flight mode names and positions set you're ready to physically set the flight control surfaces to correspond to your flight modes. To do this, return to the functional mode list screen and scroll down to the camber preset screen and you press the scroll switch once. Let's go down to camber presets, press the scroll switch, and here you see the first screen. In these screens, you can see them change when you activate a flight mode, and that flight mode command is visible by the name on the screen. We'll go take you through that a couple of times. Right now you're on cruise. Launch mode. Launch mode. Cruise mode. Thermal mode. Speed mode. And let's go back on up to cruise. Thermal mode. Cruise mode. Now my cruise mode, I've set up the aircraft so that there's no camber or no reflex on the trailing edge of the wing. You can see on the aileron command, left and right, it's set at zero, no change at all. The flaps are also set at zero, no change at all. And the elevators at zero, no change at all. There's also a monitor to the left and you can see the movement of the servos electronically as you move the stick. This will help you coordinate the flight modes and the movement that they make. Now let's say let's go into a, uh, one of the flight modes and we're going to make a change. Mode. We're going to the landing mode. The number one thing that you want to change in the landing mode is the flaps. Depress the scroll switch and now we can add a value to that. At this point you should have your aircraft actually already assembled so you can watch the result on the aircraft. And if you want both flaps to match, you, then what you want to do is match that value, 26.5. And now you'll have the flap mov movement at 26.5. If you watch the monitor, you should see it move. Let's get into the flap mode. Cruise mode. Landing mode. And as you saw, the monitor moved, showing you the flap motion. That's it. If you go through all of your presets this way, you'll get each one of your flight modes set up just the way you want it to do. Let's take a look at what the result is on our servo sim. By running through the different flight modes and setting what I believe to be close to the desired wing configuration for servo position, I've been able to program my flight modes. Here we see the model at the cruise mode. Now I flip to the launch mode, watch the trailing edge. You can see the entire trailing edge go down to create more lift at launch. Here it is. You know, the ailerons and the flaps both went down. We launch, get off the winch line, and go into the cruise mode. Cruise mode. Straight trailing edge, straight elevator, straight rudder. So now we're out there cruising around, we run into a thermal, and we want to take advantage of it. So now we're going to switch to the thermal mode. Thermal. And you see there's a very minor amount of trailing edge dip. Let's watch it again, we'll bring it back to normal. Cruise mode. Now going to thermal. It moves just a little bit. It's to enhance the lift capability of the wing. So now we're up, up to Angels 20. We've done a successful job of thermaling up, but we wish to come down in a hurry. We're going to go into the speed mode. Again, watch the trailing edge. As you see, it picks up upward, this time changing the airfoil to a more symmetrical airfoil, making the aircraft faster. Once we're down, we want to go into the landing mode. So here we go. And now the throttle stick apps acts as our, throt, um, our landing mode switch. Flaps go down, ailerons go up, 
Now watch the elevator. It also compensates for the additional lift created by the flaps during the landing mode. So it's keeping the nose level for you. And there you have it. We have launch. We have cruise. We have thermal. We have speed. And then we have landing. All five flight modes. There you go, guys. Additionally, you still have the normal mixing options available to you, including aileron to rudder mix, flap to elevator mix, flap -ron mix, watch the flaps and the ailerons move in unison, and elevator to flap mix, also known as snap flap. Now there goes up and the flaps go down. These mixes would be activated using different switches on the transmitter, so you're able to activate them at will. So as you can see, the DX6 is a very capable radio system. While there are quite a few other six-channel support radios out there, none will have this versatility coupled with voice warnings and reminders, and 250 model memory, SD card secondary memory, and of course, backed by the finest customer service in the industry. If you're in the market for a six-channel system with robust programming capability, you need not look any further than the Spectrum DX6. I hope that this Team Tech Tip has been of value to you and enhanced your hobby enjoyment. Stay tuned for more tips, tricks, and techniques from the Team Horizon. I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and you just got a Team Tech Tip. Thanks for watching.